Hi, I'm J.D. Hazenbank. I want to bring you a special report today on uh, what we're learning about shoes and orthotics. Um, we've been prescribing orthotics for probably the last eight years in this clinic, and I've been wearing them myself for about 12 years. Uh, but we've only been recently prescribing the right shoes for your body uh, for maybe the last four or five years. Okay, so we've just recently got into that, and so we're starting to see some of the payoff in combining the right shoes with the right orthotics. And here's some of the things that we're seeing. Um, when people actually get in a uh, shoe that's right for their body, and they actually have a orthotic where we can actually scan their foot and see what it's doing in real-time motion, like we do with our computer gait analysis, um, we are seeing people's feet change. Uh, 12 months out, 18 months out, 24 months out, and they no longer need the same type of prescription in their orthotic, and they may not need the same type of support and prescription in their shoe. So one of the things I want to do is for patients who have uh, prescription orthotics and uh, have been wearing them for over 12 months, it's time to actually get a rescan on your feet. Uh, here's why. Uh, what we found is a lot of people are in great shoes. They're just not the right shoes for their body. So the very first thing we want to do is actually check and make sure you're in the right shoes for your body. So bring your shoes in when you come in for your check and make sure we can actually check them out. Um, once we make sure you're in the right shoes, or if your shoe prescription needs to change to another category because you no longer need um, support in one area, your body's adapted to that, we need to start offering support in another area, uh, then what we'll do is we'll scan your foot again, uh, compare it to your original gait scan, and we can see the changes that have occurred. In the past, we probably would have had somebody come in and we would have said, okay, it's time to renew your orthotic. Let's just go ahead and order you a new one. We get a new one in. What we're seeing is these orthotics that we do from a computer scan are not just simply support for the feet and for the rest of the body. They're actually retraining tools. It's kind of like having a, uh, it's kind of like having a training wheel where um, it won't let you go too far this way or too far this way, but it keeps you going in the right direction. And when that foot hits the ground, if this were your big toe and this were the heel, that foot should hit the ground out here, come across, and come right off that big toe. Okay, so that's the motion that should occur right there. We're seeing a lot of people strike right in their heel and come right to their forefoot, but never actually go from the outside all the way across to the inside. This is part of your shock absorption and propulsion type mechanism. But what we're finding is when you have the right shoe on somebody's feet and the right orthotic to help to guide that line, it's a matter of time. It's a matter of 9, 12 months and the foot and the body and the rest of the leg and hips and knees and pelvis and everything upstream has adapted. So uh, we, we greatly uh, recommend that everybody come in and get this checked out. I was shocked at my most recent scan. I'll probably show you guys kind of a before and after um, so that you can see the progression. Uh, it's one of the best scans that we've seen yet. In fact, uh, I think I've actually gotten to the point where I've worked myself out of our, my orthotics. So that is the ultimate goal is not to have you in orthotics for the rest of your life, but to let your body adapt little by little by little and eventually wean you off of those orthotics. So come on in, um, get your orthotics checked, uh, get your feet uh, scanned again. You know, let's take a look and compare it based on your other scan. Uh, let's also get you in the right shoes. And then let's also start talking about some appropriate exercises that you need to start doing to be able to wean yourself off of orthotics. Eventually, it'd be nice to be able to just have you in shoes that are right for your body and not have to worry about the orthotics. I finally arrived there, but it's taken me about you know five years to get to that point of training up to that point. I think if I had done some exercises in the meantime, I'd have sped that process up. Um, but we want to make sure that you're actually in the right shoes, right orthotics, doing the right exercises so we can eventually get you out of orthotics. Orthotics shouldn't be a lifelong deal. It should actually just be something that's temporary to help you get going and get going in the right direction. All right, let me go ahead and also give you an update on some things that we, uh, we're learning here. Um, we're learning that shoes need to be replaced in about two or three months. If you're tracking mileage, about every 200 miles. 200 is your max. That's kind of when you're starting to run on flat tires. Um, if you're not actually running and tracking your mileage, probably base it every two to three months. So once a quarter, we should have new shoes probably four times a year. What do you do with the shoes that actually still look good and still look great? Retire them and let them be your shoes that you uh, hang out around. Don't exercise uh, in your kick around shoes. Let your exercise shoes be your exercise shoes. 
once you're done with the exercise shoes in about two or three months, make them your kick around shoes that you can walk around and hang around the house in. Um, it's It takes 24 to 48 hours for the squishiness, the gas is inside the actual shoe material. Here, I'll show you mine. So this, this white material right here, it actually takes 48 hours for this white material to reabsorb their gases. This actually, this one has gel on the back right here, so it doesn't have that um, gas absorption factor back here. But if this, if you have white material that goes all the way to the back right there, it's going to take 48 hours for the gases to fully resorb. So if you don't actually let your shoes have a rest, you're basically running around or walking around on flat tires. So let your Running shoes, be your running shoes, and let your kick around shoes be your kick around shoes. Once these go about two or three months or about 200 miles, make them your kick around shoes. Uh, once they start to look a little nasty and dirty, make them your yard shoes or donate them to a ministry that actually uh, can't afford having shoes for kids or for adults. Um, they still are going to look really good on the bottom. It's just they're not actually doing their job. All right, so your orthotics, the prescription orthotics, are probably going to only last about 12 or 18 months. How you judge that um, is based on um, mileage. You know, if you're training for marathons, um, Olympic distance triathlons, half Ironmans, and Ironmans, they need to be replaced about every 12 months. Um, if you're just running Memorial Park or Rice maybe two or three times a week uh, for two or three miles a piece, they'll probably last you about 18 months. You know, so your orthotics should last you through at least four to six pairs of shoes. Uh, but they do need to be replaced simply because they break down and your body's changing. So you no longer need the support that they're offering. We've got to change that up based on where your body is at that time. Kind of, it's almost like it's almost like getting your body to this point, and then we change and it gets it to that point. Then we change and it gets it to that point. We keep working our way up until finally you're out of orthotics. So that's. That's my words of wisdom for today. It's really exciting to see all these new gait scans over the last two years and see them have changed significantly. So get in, get your gait scan done, let us check your shoes, get you a new shoe prescription if we need to, or to let you know some of our new shoe updates, and let's make sure to dial you in so we can keep moving you forward and eventually get you out of orthotics. Okay. Our next report's going to be on barefoot running, but we got to get your foot stable to the point that you're foot, ankle, knee, hip, pelvis, and low back can handle barefoot running and can handle really building up those muscles to go further and faster. All right, I'm J.D. Hazenbank. Good to see you.